Welcome back, my dear friends. We've come a long way, haven't we? We've spent a lot of time together, visited some truly unbelievable places, and have had to deal with some of the dangers of our personal fears. But now, sit back and make yourself comfortable, because you're about to witness the final part of Silent Hill, History of the Series. Up until this moment we've discussed all complete games in this horror franchise, so this time we'll be going through the spin-offs, different variations of the games, and some teasers, if you know what I mean. I won't be shocked if this episode feels more drawn out than previous ones, but this is a complete summary after all. There are a plethora of writings inspired by the misty and mysterious town. There were three novels written, each based on the first three games. Unfortunately, they can only be found in Japan and were never translated officially. Also, the country of the rising sun got the art book, an extensive guide and another book based on the first Silent Hill game. The sheer amount of comic books produced are astronomical. First one of them is called Dying Inside. Through its five publications, this series tells us the story of a film student named Lynn DeAngelis. She went to Silent Hill in order to record some materials about the abandoned town. After coming back, she was constantly in state of stress and started to have mental breakdowns. The psychotherapist Troy Abernethy came across her file and decided to help. He took her to Silent Hill once more, so she might face her fears and overcome them. But in the end of the second comic book, this couple disappears. Starting from the third comic book, a new plot begins to build around a certain Raymond Foch. He's a punk who found Lynn's records from Silent Hill. He and his friends decide to go to Silent Hill as well to investigate this case. I won't discuss the plot in depth, it's not important to the overall story arc. Besides, these comic books are pretty short and you can familiarize yourself with them easily. In 2004 another comic book was released, Among the Damned. This book tells us about the horrors of a former soldier named Jason. It turns out that after an intense military battle, he was the only survivor. Afterwards, he was interrogated, officers suspected him to be guilty of treason and desertion. In the end, no evidence was found and he was acquitted. But Jason himself couldn't deal with all that and was suffering from a single survivor syndrome. Those restless thoughts led him to Silent Hill. The next comic in the series is Painted Black. This one was released in stores back in 2005. It is about an artist called Ike Isaac, who goes to the misty town in order to find his muse. Suddenly, every monster in Silent Hill peacefully and willingly posed in front of the artist. It was all going good, but in a moment it became horrifying clear that Ike would never be able to leave the city. Luckily, he was rescued by a cheer team who came to Silent Hill in order to find their missing members. Also in 2005, another comic book was released, The Grinning Man. The plot surrounds one Robert Tower, who has been patrolling Silent Hill for 10 years as a police officer, yet never actually saw any monsters. Until one day when a serial killer appears in Silent Hill. People call him The Grinning Man. And now Robert has to go into the heart of this nightmare in order to destroy the killer. Later, the last three stories were combined and were sold under the name Silent Hill Three Bloody Tales. In 2006, another cycle of comics began, consisting of five books. The name of the cycle is Dead Slash Alive. This cycle was slightly connected with the cycle Dying Inside. Also, there were some other plot elements taken from other comics, for example, the character Ike, the artist. To expand the universe even more, a special UMD was released for PSP in 2006, aptly called Silent Hill Experience. This disc had 20 music compositions, different game trailers and videos, as well as an assortment of comic books from the series. The first one is called Hunger. This is a story about a reporter, Douglas Payne Brenneman. He and his fiancée come to Silent Hill in order to write an article about a police officer who was killed. In typical Silent Hill fashion, though, things were far worse than expected. The next comic book from this disc has already been mentioned, Dying Inside. This time this comic was animated with music from the games playing on the background. From here on there were several years of silence, no releases of any kind, 
until a four-part comic series titled Sinner's Reward was released. In the series, a killer Jack Stanton decided to run away with the wife of his boss. Unfortunately, he could not run from his past, and the road led him to Silent Hill. And as we all know, this town does love sinners, so this professional killer receives a warm welcome there. Two years after, some artists decided to make their original move. They moved the story of the comic books called Past Life to 1867, right after the end of Civil War. This artwork consists of four issues and tells us the story of Jebediah Foster, who decided to return back to his hometown, Silent Hill. There he wanted to start a new calm life with his family, but naturally it's something he won't be able to fulfill. The last series of comic books is called Anne's Story, and as you've probably guessed, tells us the story of Anne Marie Cunningham from Silent Hill Downpour. We finally get to see what path she took in order to catch Murphy Pendleton. All those comic books were published by IDW Publishing, who also released another three graphic novels, and the author of those novels is Masahiro Ito. If you don't remember who this guy is, he was the main artist and designer in Team Silent. There were three issues. Two of them were released as downloadable manga for mobile platforms with names Cage of Cradle and Double Under Dusk. The first comic book tells us the story of Lisa the nurse, and the story that took place before the events of the first game. The second one was dedicated to an unknown Brian Dawson. He goes through some rough times after the death of his son. Then he meets a woman he had seen in his nightmares. Together they decide to go to Silent Hill. The last comic book is called, and this is the place where I can be sure about my pronunciation, Billy Ahodnik, or White Hunter. It was included in the Silent Hill Origins official soundtrack, and consisted only of six pages. The main hero there is Pyramid Head, and it's interesting to point out that the name of the comic book, along with the titles, were originally written in Russian, for whatever reason. Alright, wake up already! I finished talking about comic books. Now I'm going to touch the movies and games, so the descriptions will be more… dynamic. Silent Hill was brought to cinemas in April 2006, and is most famous for the fact that Sean Bean doesn't die. First game was taken as a basis for the storyline, but in many ways the movie was different from the origin story. The most noticeable difference is the main hero, or should I say, heroine. See, I've done my homework thanks to you guys. No more Harry Mason, this place is taken by Rose De Silva, Sharon's mother. Here her name is not Cheryl, but Sharon. These girls are willing to go to Silent Hill, which now situated in the state of Maine, not in Virginia. But they didn't go there on a vacation. The girl was suffering from nightmares, and while sleeping she screamed the name of this town. From here on, everything happens according to canon. From the car crash, search of a missing daughter, dark alley, a crucified man and little monsters. Soon enough though, we start to see some changes again. Instead of Dahlia as the main antagonist, Christabella takes her place. Compared to the game, we can see a great number of followers of this cult in the movie. Dahlia is present in the movie, but here she is just a homeless hermit who is able to leave among monsters. In parallel with the main plot, Sean Bean tries to find his wife and daughter, but he's actually situated in real world and never goes to the other world. Also, they changed the ending by adding more blood and gore. Despite all those changes, the creators tried to not break canons of the game. For example, our heroine visits all the familiar places from the game, Midovich School, the church and even hospital. Not Alchemilla Hospital, but Brookhaven Hospital, which is actually supposed to be situated on the other side of the lake, but that's neither here nor there. Some scenes seem to be taken right from the game, including certain camera angles. Many monsters were also recognizable, but they were taken from other games as well. I think that was done for variety's sake. Still, it's not a game. Every monster was created with makeup and costumes, rather than computer effects. Finally, the cherry on top of the cake is the film's soundtrack by Akira Yamaoka. Despite the fact that the movie did not gain notoriety, and some critics even crushed the movie in subsequent reviews, it still gathered good box office sales. The second part was released six whole years later. Silent Hill 2 was finally released in 2012. And the story was not about James Sunderland. 
It was decided on to take the third game as a basis for the script, since it's a straight sequel. Silent Hill Revelations is telling us the familiar story of Heather Mason. The girl managed to leave Silent Hill unlike her mother. Now she has to hide from the cult with her dad. And the whole plot has a striking resemblance to the game, but with a few minor changes of course. Detective Douglas, who was by our side almost all the time in the game, dies in the beginning of the movie. His place will be taken by Johnson. <clears throat> beg your pardon, Vincent. This insidious character has lost his charm and charisma and turned instead into an ordinary teenager who decides to help Heather. The funny thing is, according to the original game, Heather's dad is killed. But in the movie, where Sean Bean's character is supposed to die, cultists only kidnap him. And the girl goes to Silent Hill not to avenge him, but to save Harry. And in the end of the movie, he also stays alive and goes to Silent Hill to find his wife. The ending has changed completely. Also, a couple of easter eggs could be seen there. For example, Travis Grady in his truck. And prison patrol that looks like the one that was carrying Murphy Pendleton. This time, critics were even more severe and absolutely stomped on the movie. Which is a bit strange, I don't think it's the worst horror movie in the world. Besides the official movies, there are a lot of fan movies, short movies and even some cartoons. Most of them are not of a great quality, but sometimes it's possible to find something interesting. Like the story of James I mentioned in the second part of Silent Hill History of the Series. The same thing can be told about game modifications. Take Silent Hill Alchemilla for example, a very ambitious project in my opinion. We'll talk about it a bit later. Or the story of a postman from Downpour called The Pledge. The last one is still in development. And as we have started talking about such things, it's time to discuss some of the games. The first one is Silent Hill Play Novel, that was released in 2001 for Game Boy Advance only in Japan. This is a visual novel based on the plot of the first game. You read text and make some decisions. There were two scenarios for Harry and one for Sybil. Also, there were several endings and one downloadable scenario for a boy called Andy. He was a neighbor of Cheryl and Harry. Konami at first wanted to release different scenarios from different perspectives, but dropped this idea in the end. Another Silent Hill game is called Silent Hill DX. Again, it is based on the first game and the mechanics is pretty similar. Only step-by-step -step fights were added. And it's actually really hard to find this game somewhere. That's why you're looking at screenshots, not even the footage of the game. Not only Japan received some extra games, there were some games that were released for Europe as well. Three games were released in 2007, 2008 and 2010 with the subhead Orphan. This part takes place in an orphanage, where all but three children were killed one night 30 years ago. The first part of Orphan tells us the stories of these three children. The second part continued the plot, but with different characters. And the third part completed the story of these poor orphans. I won't be going deep into the plot, it's better to describe the mechanics. These games were basically point and click quests, where players had to search for items, solve some puzzles and shoot. The last game for mobile platforms was Silent Hill The Escape. It was designed to make full use of phone's gyroscope sensor. This is a first person shooter where a player has to escape the maze with monsters. There were different types of monsters in this game. There was no plot, just a sluggish soliloquy. So we won't pay too much attention to this game when we have much higher quality content to go through. First one of these is Silent Hill Arcade. The game is a tier that was released for Konami arcade game machines. But thanks to people who create emulators, it is possible to play this game on other platforms. It's rather short if you play it on your computer, but as an arcade game, it was long enough. If you remember, in the very first episode I told you the story about the accident that happened on the ship called Little Baroness. For some unknown reason, the ship started sinking and there were no survivors. Now we can begin to uncover the veil of mystery that surrounded that accident. First of all, the game throws us back in time to 1918, not long before the accident. A short flashback shows us the death of a little girl Hannah. Her own mother pushed her off the ship into the waters of Toluca Lake. The captain of the ship tries to help her, but to no avail. 
After that, the events jump 75 years forward. A group of students from an occult club decide to go to Silent Hill. But the following morning, the town meets our heroes with impenetrable fog and monsters who hide in it. Fog? So, two main heroes, Eric and Tina, decide to go out and start shooting all the monsters they encounter. First of all, they go to Brookhaven Hospital, and there they meet a girl Emily, but she runs away from them, so they chase after her. On their way, they will have to choose whether to rescue their friends from trouble or not. After that, we find out that Emily lost her mother and wants to find her. Although her father claims that her mother is dead, the girl doesn't believe him and runs towards the little baroness to meet her there. The ship suddenly appeared near the shore. Mommy! Wait! Emily! Emily! She won't find her mother there, but she will find a ghost of a woman who killed her daughter 75 years ago. She transforms into a monster and pulls down the girl to the bottom, but our protagonists jump after her and save the girl. In the end, players will be able to face three endings and one bonus ending. But first of all, let me discuss the motivation of some heroes. Hannah's mother pushed her from the ship because she couldn't take care of her deadly sick child any longer. Apparently the girl had tuberculosis. Even one of the bosses has the same name. The captain of the ship was a great-grandfather of the main protagonist. He's my great-grandfather. What? He was the captain of the sightseeing ship in this town. The ending depended on whether the main hero saved all his friends and shot off all monsters' hands. In the best ending though, everybody survived, including the little girl. If less people were rescued, the ending would be worse. And about that bonus ending, again, you better look yourself. What? Eric! I am so proud of you that you got over this crisis. Everything was my doing. Great Grandpa? <laughs> Isn't it cool, Eric? This is my new ship. And you are alive? Hey, where is Emily? Emily and Hannah have both fallen in my hands. If you want them back, come chasing after me to the end of the universe. Eric, what is up with you? Hurry, we have to go after them in this space it's combat, combat ship. ship. What? You wait. After that, Robbie the Rabbit is playing some game. There were different types of monsters. Gumhead, the nurse, Scrapper, Robbie and Red Pyramid thing. The strangest thing in this game is the levels, because inside Little Baroness we could visit the mall from Silent Hill 3. In general this is a standard tier, where you have to shoot everything you see. All in all, the mobile games were not hugely important entries in the series. Unlike these, the game that was released on PlayStation Vita was more powerful than PSP and had better controls. We could hope for something like Silent Hill Origins, but we got Silent Hill Book of Memories. On one rainy day, our protagonist, who can be either a man or a woman, receives a package. Package for you? I don't know anybody in Silent Hill. You'd be surprised. For this description, he'll be a man. First off, a package is delivered by the same postman from Downpour. There is a book inside a package with the details of our protagonist. He decides that this must be some kind of joke and decides to rewrite some details in this book. After falling asleep, he finds himself in a scary supernatural world. There, he must kill a huge number of monsters, meet the boss and deal with him. After waking up, our hero finds out that the changes he made in the book happened in real life, so he kept changing different details and events. His promotion, the meeting with his first love, and so on and so forth. Depending on the protagonist's karma, these changes happened either with good circumstances or bad circumstances. I'll tell you about karma a bit later. But all in all, this is the entire plot. In this game there are five possible endings, none of which are particularly interesting. They only describe the circumstances and consequences of using the book and that's all. But there was one joke ending that was much more interesting than any of the others. This ending is done in a comic style and has a huge number of references to the previous entries. This ending adds a lot of humor and fun when portraying of the most famous elements of previous games. 
Hey, Heather, can you head upstairs? A guest in room 302 locked himself in again. <sighs> in regard to gameplay, unfortunately, that's probably the worst part of this game. Even in comparison with the plot. First of all, this is not a horror game anymore, but a dungeon crawler, like Diablo for example. A player finds himself in a randomly generated location, which consists of several rooms, and he has to kill all the monsters, find some keys, and open the final door with them. All monsters were seen in previous games, and weapons are not original either. Melee weapons can break, so players have to either repair them or find new weapons. You can only carry two kinds of weapons, besides money, medical kits and keys. With your money you can buy some useful items and the featured seller here is for some reason Howard the Postman. Also as I've already mentioned, for the first time in the series you are able to choose the gender of your protagonist. And the last thing, Karma. There were two kinds of monsters in the game, white ones and red ones. And after dying they would leave liquid of the same color. All you have to do is to collect that liquid. The red liquid is responsible for decreasing your karma and white one for increasing it. It could give you some special abilities though. Low karma players can cast a spell that damages enemies in a certain area, while white karma players can heal themselves. Of course, the game received some not so pleasant reviews. There was absolutely no atmosphere of the previous games, so you can barely call it Silent Hill. And for a clone of Diablo, it was incredibly shallow. Now I would like to discuss the game that I mentioned before, called Silent Hill Alchemilla, made by White Noise based on Source Engine, being a mod for Half-Life 2. This team represented its own vision of the Misty Town and made a pretty good job. First of all, I would like to point out the graphics. Of course, it's really far from perfect, but the artists copied almost every color, every detail of the original games. Even if you don't know what you're playing, you can feel that the game has something to do with Silent Hill games. There are a lot of vivid references to their original games, like saves at glowing signs on the walls, familiar names like Dr. Kaufman, Lisa, White Claudia, Room 3 or 2, the radio, the flashlight, and some other things. The music in the game also has some resemblance with the first parts. And it even doesn't seem like it was created by some enthusiasts. But unfortunately all those positive aspects are beaten by the absence of enemies. At first White Noise team wanted to add a combat system to the game but having realized that it's not that easy, decided to give up that idea. That's the reason you don't feel any fear. Yeah, you still can die in this game, but the fact that no one can kill you there destroys the atmosphere completely. Well, you're able to meet a nurse once, but that's basically it. Hey, hey, you okay? The whole plot is really short and can be described in two sentences. The gameplay consists of running, solving some puzzles and opening doors. Nevertheless, we should remember that this 3 hours long game was created by a bunch of enthusiasts and it took them 6 years to recreate the atmosphere of Silent Hill. And I'm really happy that I have a chance to play it. I think you should try that too. And now, it's finally time to talk about PT. A lot of you must have seen dozens of videos about this game. And I think I won't tell you anything extraordinary or game-changing. The first mentions that Hideo Kojima wanted to take part in the development of the game based on Silent Hill franchise using his Fox engine were found in 2012. In August, on Gamescom 2014, a so-called playable teaser was shown to public. And on the 12th of August, this teaser could be downloaded from PS Store. Well, let's discuss everything in order. At first, guests of Gamescom could observe the name of an unknown developer's team, which was actually a hint to the upcoming project, but I'll tell you about it later. Despite the fact that this team was unknown, it caught people's attention with its atmosphere of horror and claustrophobia. At first, there was nothing special about the trailer. The game welcomes players with the phrase Watch out, the gap in the door is a separate reality. The only me is me. Are you sure the only you is you? Our hero wakes up in a concrete room and goes through the only open door into a corridor of a house or apartment. We find out that some doors, including the exit door, are closed. It's raining outside. We can see different cans, bottles, pills, garbage, paintings on the walls and some pictures, presumably of people who used to live there. A 
After walking through the only open door, players understand that the corridor is looped, and after every walkthrough, some elements may change. The announcer on the radio tells us that there were several murders committed by fathers of different families, one a month before events of the game, and one more about a year ago. With time, we start to understand that this corridor transforms into a real nightmare. Somebody starts knocking at the doors, players start hearing women's and babies' cries. The announcer from the radio starts talking directly to the player. We meet a ghost of a woman who even kills us after some time. Despite that, players could find messages in different languages. Kojima said that it was done in order to make players cooperate with each other. The first one is to collect all pieces of a torn photo on the wall. It can actually be really tricky. After finding each piece, a player is able to see messages in English, Portuguese, Italian, Japanese and Dutch. At first, if you look at them, these phrases don't make any sense. But if you try to combine them logically, you'll be able to end up with something like this. During the inert waiting, I stopped moving. I whispered his name. Then he slid his index finger over my hand. It was a cold hand. My body was shivering. I waited for it to pass. Never moving a step, his hand in mine and fading through a fog of consciousness. I believe I heard a call. I'll tell you about possible meanings of those phrases a bit later. The second puzzle is the phrase that players are able to see while going through a red corridor. On one of the walls, a message I can hear them calling to me from can be discovered and one more hello word on the other wall. If you focus your camera on this hello word, we'll be able to see that a letter from this greeting moved to the phrase. After repeating the sequence of actions, you'll reveal the complete phrase that will turn into I can hear them calling to me from hell. To solve the third puzzle, players have to trigger a child's laughter three times. Different sources claim to get it differently, but I'll tell you about the most popular ones. After the clock strikes midnight, from any location, move your character 10 full steps in any direction, and be sure to stop immediately on your 10th step. This should trigger the first baby laughter. Then, from any location, speak into your PlayStation microphone the letter J and then stay completely silent for at least 3 full seconds. Continue to say J into the mic between at least 3 full second intervals of silence. After saying J a total of 3, 4 or even 5 times, this should trigger the second baby laughter. Why exactly J, you might ask? Remember the phrases when you get after finding all pieces of the photo. It can assume as a guide to action. One of the phrases says, I whispered his name. So maybe that's exactly what we should do. I need to mention that there are several death screens in the game. And one of them says, Knowing you, I was sure you'd notice this game and play it. I will never, can never, forget that day 20 years ago. I have something to tell you. Contact me. J. And apparently the name that we should whisper starts with this letter. Some players presumably managed to reveal the whole name, Jareth. But I think I won't retell you all that research in this video, I'll just leave you the link. Then stand still and do absolutely nothing and you should get the third and final giggle. The telephone starts ringing. Approach it, zoom in and you'll get the message You've been chosen. The door is unlocked and you're free to go outside and watch that Silent Hills trailer. Well, that's basically it. Of course, if you just retell the plot like this, it seems not so crazy. But seriously, if you even watch someone's Let's Play video, you'll catch the feeling of horror. I should also point out that the graphics didn't look that bad, but Kojima claimed that they intentionally made the graphics worse from what it could be, so the audience could believe that PT is just a project from independent developers. As I've already said, the name of the team was 7780S. This is actually the size of one prefecture in Japan in square kilometers called Shizuoka. 
This name is made from two kanjis, Shizuka and Oka. And literally, this prefecture is translated like Silent Hill. Of course, there are dozens of theories about this Caesar on the internet. I won't be naming all of them, just tell you the most possible ones, in my opinion. The first theory is based on very first quote from the beginning of the game and the phrase that we'll hear from the talking paper bag about that separate reality and all that stuff. I walked. I could do nothing but walk. And then I saw me walking in front of myself. But it wasn't really me. Watch out. The gap in the door. It's a separate reality. Also, the plural name of the game Silent Hills hints us that the game may be based on multiple universes and multidimensional gameplay. That this game may create a personal nightmare for everyone who enters Silent Hill, something like we could see in Silent Hill 2. The next theory may consider the message that we could hear in Swedish. It claims that the drama that happened 75 years ago was actually true. That's probably a reference to the actual radio broadcasts about alien invasion that happened 75 years ago in order to look at people's reaction. And the message in the game claims that it was true. Or you just can consider it as reference to previous games where players could discover an ending with aliens. The next theory is all about possible mind control that is supported by real scientific researchers, better known under the names MKUltra and Project Bluebird, which were officially run by CIA in 1951-1953. Those experiments were conducted in isolation, frequently under the effect of LSD. All that could lead to personality disorder, dissociation, and appearance of one or multiple personas inside people's subconscious. It's possible that unsolved sequence of numbers 204-863 is a trigger for activation of that or those subconscious personas. Because we all remember what radio said. Police arriving on scene after neighbors called 9-11 found the father in his car listening to the radio. Several days before the murders, neighbors say they heard the father repeating a sequence of numbers in a loud voice. They said it was like he was chanting some strange spell. This theory is also can be supported by the phrase that we know. The only me is me. Are you sure the only you is you? Of course, these theories are not the only ones. There are dozens of theories on the internet. But in my opinion, these are the most possible ones. When the teaser was shown, not all players noticed familiar elements from the previous parts. For example, a radio and flashlight, essential elements of Silent Hill games, name of Lisa that we could hear in the first game, a wife who was killed by her husband like in Silent Hill 2. Halo of the Sun that was actively used starting from the third part. The fetus that looks similar to one Heather puked up in the third part as well. The first person view and apartment that cannot be escaped, straight from the fourth part. Also there is a hole in the wall and even the position of items is almost identical to the fourth part. You got fired so you drowned your sorrows in booze. She had to get a part-time job working a grocery store cash register. Only reason she could earn a wage at all is the manager liked how she looked in a skirt. You remember, right? Exactly ten months back. The protagonist uses the telephone and hear mysterious messages like in Silent Hill 3 and Shattered Memories. Also, it's raining outside. Not sure whether it is a reference to downpour, but still. Also, after completing some actions, you can hear a child's laughter, like in downpour. (laughs) 
All in all, as we can see, this game had not just big, but a huge potential. We could even talk about a grand rebirth of the series, but as we all know now, the project was cancelled. Thousands of fans, including me, were extremely depressed and even created petitions to ask Konami continue the development of this project, but to no avail. After some time, even this playable teaser was deleted from PS Store. The only way to play it now is to buy a PS4 console with already installed game. No surprise that there were players who wanted to sell their consoles for a higher price, and there were players who wanted to play that game at all costs. But still, it's very possible that many ideas will be transferred to Kojima's new project, Death Stranding. We already know that there was a mention of Umbilical Cord in PT, and Death Stranding seems to have a big deal with Umbilical Cords, as well as the presence of Norman Reedus and Guillermo del Toro. Well, at this point I'll bring this episode to a conclusion. We saw how it all started, saw the ups and downs of the series, and more. Of course, I can't go over every single little detail, so if you're so inclined, you yourself can always dig deeper and find even more meaning and depth to the story. Silent Hill is understood differently by every person who plays it. You can interpret its plot in different ways, everyone can be afraid of different things, and everyone will remember it in their own way. There are not so many games out there that can be proud of such a feat. I truly hope it's been interesting and eye-opening for you watching these videos. It's hard to say goodbye, so I won't, because someday we'll be able to meet each other on the streets of this mysterious and abandoned town that we call Silent Hill.